One of my favorite things about Hobonichi planners is that it really is a life planner. There are so many sections that you can fill with different areas of your life. You have the annual calendar, the monthly, weekly, daily section. You also have my 100 in the back, a place for recipes, addresses, academic calendar if you're in school, along with a couple of notes pages as well. And then in the very front, you have the yearly index section. Now, if you happen to be new to Hobonichi planners or you're an avid Hobonichi planner, you might have maybe one idea or two ideas on how you can use this area but then the rest of the year you don't want it to go to waste right so today I'm going to give you some ideas that you can try in your Hobonichi planner for that yearly index section hey friends welcome back and welcome new friends let's get started with the first idea that I have for you and that is to use your yearly index as a budget section now you could use each month as a monthly budget section for saving, for investing, for paying off your debt. Now at the very top, what I did with this section where you have the three boxes to the left, you can use that for your goals for that month, for your financial goals. Here I put have 10 no spend days, save for summer vacation, pay off TD Bank credit card, and I put the balance in parentheses as well. Then as the days of the month goes, I put when I got paid and then I subtracted a couple of things that I spent money on. So anything that I spent money on every single day, I wrote it here. And you can also see to the right side, I put what category or where I may have spent the money at grocery shopping, Dollar Tree, spending on lunch maybe at work, put some money towards savings and then here, a no spend day. Then you can see put some money towards that TD bank credit card, paid for daycare, utilities, and so on. So you kind of get the idea how you can have your budget here. It's perfect because you have space for every single day to put if you save money, spent money, invest the money, whatever it is that you're doing along with having those financial goals there at the top. Now at the very bottom, I didn't use this space, but you could also use this space to have an area for your debt or for your savings investments if you want to just kind of track it by itself, you still have a section here. So this is a way that you can use it from month to month. Instead of setting up another section in the back of your Hobonichi planner, you can use it right there in the front, that index section. Now let's hop on over to the second one. You can use this for exercise, right? Maybe you're a person that likes to track your steps. A lot of people like to do that. I know I used to do it a lot when I had my Apple Watch. I would also track my calories, different things like that with it. You can track your steps right here. This way you can see how many steps that you're doing every single day. Let's say at the top, your goal is 10,000 steps per day. Then maybe three days that you actually want to run. Then of course you see over here to the right, I wrote down these were the days that I had a little bit higher than average step count and that's because I ran that day. Or maybe if you also want to watch your caloric intake, you can have that here on the right side or just have that there all together and not have the steps if you don't want to track your steps. Or maybe let's say for instance, you are trying to lift more weights, right? You're trying to lift heavier weights. You start off with the two pounds, three pounds, maybe five pounds and 10 pounds. You're trying to get to 25 pounds, right? To do your bicep curls and things like that. Maybe you might want to write, okay, these are the days that when I worked out, I lifted the three pound weight. Then when you get to the five pound, then when you get to 10 pounds, that way, if you feel like you're not making progress too, this really helps to see that progress because then you can see, okay, it may not be as fast as I want it to be, but I'm still making that progress towards my goal with working out and getting healthier. And can use that section for this. Also down here, maybe what you might want to do is write down what you might want to reward yourself with if you do reach those fitness goals um, or maybe with your caloric intake maybe you're going to have a cheat meal okay after let's say 10 days of watching what i'm eating every single day no junk food snacks right only healthy snacks if anything i'm watching my sugar all those things okay by the 11th day i'm allowed to have this slice of cheesecake or i'm allowed to have two donuts or i'm going to have that uh, Dunkin Donuts, uh, Colada, whatever they call it. I don't drink coffee. I'm sorry, guys. I'm all about tea and hot chocolate. But you get what I'm saying? Or hot chocolate. Maybe I'll have a big hot chocolate because that's a ton of sugar. Things like that you might want to put here to have a reward for yourself at the end of the month. So that would be pretty nice to have. All right, let's move on to the next yearly index section. Now, this one is a little bit different. 
it's not necessarily a tracker at all. Now, if you're not the type of person that really wants to track a bunch of things, and not everybody's really that good at that sort of thing, but you still want to use this yearly index section because you don't want it to go to waste. And why would you want it to go to waste, right? The planner is not cheap at all. Now, I've shared with you guys in previous videos that in the back of the planner, I have, well, not this one, this is the actually the 22. So the 2023 Hobonichi Cousin that I have in the back, I just put strips of washi tape, all my washi tape to put in the bag this way I can just see the different ones that I use throughout the year now let's say for instance you want to use only certain washi tapes for a specific month because you want to keep that month looking pretty nice from day to day and they kind of match right you want it to match maybe especially in your daily section then you could just put the washi tape samples in this section or even if you don't want to have those section kind of be cohesive, you can just put all your washi tape samples here. And this is a way you can have like little mini samples throughout your book. Again, you're using this section and not letting it go to waste. You can fill it up all the way to the bottom of the page. I only filled it up to here. By the way, these washi tape, I got them from Amazon. They are just really pretty, aren't they? With a the little inlay. You can find them in my Amazon shop in case you're interested. They are a little bit more spring color theme, but I think they're pretty nonetheless. Now let's move on to the next way that you could use your yearly index. That is by writing down your gratitude. Now I shared this with you in other videos that I use my monthly section in my journal for gratitude. Now for your yearly index section, you are going to have to make it a little bit smaller but you can still write something from day to day that you are thankful for. And it's always great to appreciate what you have. Cause sometimes again, that puts everything back into perspective. When you're trying to chase goals and dreams, you feel like you don't have enough. Sometimes you have more than enough. You don't even realize it. You're in a great place right now. Even though you wanna to go to another place, sometimes you are already in a really good place. Here I wrote new car. If you're getting a new car, maybe you wanna write that there. You're thankful for that. Ice cream with the hubs. Uh, baking cookies with kids, Manny Petty, uh, having conversations with my dad. Don't know when, you know, he's going to be gone, especially elderly parents. If you haven't reached out to them, reach out to them. I'm sure they would love to talk with you or just to see you if they haven't seen them in a while. Because remember, older parents, a lot of times they're living by themselves. They get lonely, guys, you know, and one day that might be you. 7,000 subscribers. I just hit that on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for that. Couldn't have gotten there without all of my returning subscribers. And then also 300 TikTok followers. Guys, I'm on there. If you happen to be on TikTok, go ahead and follow me. I would definitely appreciate that. I'll be more than grateful. Also my health, guys. You gotta be thankful for your health. If you, you know, if you, if you have a chronic illness but you're doing all right right now, you gotta be thankful for that, right? And if you don't have any sort of disabilities or anything at the moment, you're pretty, pretty healthy. You know, that's something to be grateful for always. Uh, some quality time with my son, the fall trees. I like looking at fall foliage, guys. It's really nice, the orange, the browns, the reds. It's very pretty just to go on a nice walk outside. Rest, a two hour nap, guys. Sometimes you need that, that rest, right? Because if we hustle bustle all the time, you get burnt out, you need a break. Some beautiful rings. I love these rings that I got from Honey Cat on Amazon. I've shared them with you before. They are gorgeous, guys. I love them. And I just swap them out from time to time. Friendship lunch. I had lunch with my friends the other day. That was a lot of fun. And then having an extra day off. That is always something to be grateful for. I'm sure that we all are grateful for that one. All right, let's move on to the next yearly index section idea. That is to use this area as an inbox. Now, if you are a fan of the getting things done method, or you just like the idea of having an inbox, but you're not quite sure where to put it, maybe you're putting it on sticky notes. A lot of people do that. I've done that in the past as well. Or maybe you're using the daily section or somewhere in the monthly section or weekly section to have an inbox. Well, why not use this section if you're not using it? Then you also have one specific to every single month. Really easy to, to set up. You just write in the different things that need to get done, then check them off or cross them out when you know that you have put them in your planner on a specific date or time that you're going to try to actually get them done. And again, you'll have an area for every single month, which is really easy. 
All right, let's move on to the last idea that I have for your yearly index section, and this is not a tracker at all. This is a way to uh, see what the colors of your markers actually look like, because I'm sure that you have some sort of pen test page in the back. I'm guilty of that. Lots of times where I'll just take the marker, swipe it really quickly before I use it, even in my Hobonichi weeks, just to see what it looks like again on the paper. But if you have a ton of markers, you don't have to do that over and over again. You can just take the index section. And let's say, for instance, another idea I was thinking about actually while I was putting this together. Let's say you're not using any of the bottom section. You happen to use the top sections, but not the bottom section. You could just have, probably, probably can fit maybe about like 100 plus marker colors or pen colors in this area alone at the bottom and just write right next to it, like I have it here on top of it, okay, what color it actually is. This way you know what it looks like before you decide to use it. You don't have to do that little test every single time. You'll just be able to glance, okay, that's what it looks like. That's the color that I'm looking for or I'm not looking for. Now here with the Zig Clean Color Dot Markers, you see I have some of them over here to the right. And the reason why it is sometimes nice, of course, and not, I wouldn't say important, but nice to have a little bit of a swatch page is because you can see how dark this looks in comparison to what the actual ink looks like the cap and everything very very dark it's a it's a big difference now with the gc quill brush pens these don't have the actual marker color on them which kind of annoys me a little bit even though i really really like these markers the box had a sample of what the color looks like with the actual color name next to it, but they don't have it on the actual markers themselves. But the good part is that they do actually look very similar to the colorway on the outside cap or the body of the marker. You can see which one it is. They're very easy to figure out. But so that's why here I have just GC Quill next to it. So that's a good thing with that. And then I have some of my pens, Sarasa Dry are some of the favorite, favorite pens that I like to use in my Hobonichis. And these are just blue and red. So I just put a little sample there. That way I could see it. This red actually is very bright compared to most reds. And this blue is actually brighter too. Usually you have more of a navy blue. This is more of like a cool, bright blue. I also like to use these friction erasable pens as well. If you don't want to have anything permanent, I think I said it in another video, they all dry pretty quickly, both of them. Now, of course, the Sarasa is permanent ink, but it dries pretty quickly. And those are all the ideas that I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, go ahead, ask me in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead, give it a like. I'm sure that you'll enjoy this video next, so go ahead and watch it. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, be well.